Hi everybody and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Aton and today I will be showing you how to make this plane look like it's flying even though really it just came out of this. So this was really just I got some footage of a plane on the ground sort of being towed and then I had some other footage just flying out the window and I was able to put them together so here's how I did it. So drag this footage into a new composition and this is just um, I guess just any footage of a plane on the ground would work and so I'm just going to do the first few frames because it will take a while otherwise but you'll get the idea so that's really the point so I'm just going to cut this in here and bring it up front okay so now I'm going to go into this roto brush tool and double click and so now what we're doing is just painting over the areas we want to keep and alt painting over the areas that it selects that we don't want so I'm just probably going to do this for one or two frames you can zoom in with the mouse wheel to really make sure everything is good and then I'm not going to get the wheels because when it's flying it probably wouldn't have the wheels so again just click and drag for the parts you want and then if it selects something you don't want alt click and drag and then it will get rid of that okay so you can see it's taking a little time to do this here and um, I'm not I'm I mean this is just one frame that I'm doing and it does go faster after one frame be, after the first frame because it'll sort of track everything you have there and try to keep it moving like if we do this next frame it gets most of it there might be a few areas you have to retouch but I'm really just gonna do this bit just so you can get the basic idea but what you would do is keep going through the whole thing that you want rotoing out making sure each frame is accurate so now we're gonna go back into our composition mode and it is cut out and looks like it's sort of in flying mode so there are a few little things we have to fix we could go back and be a little more detailed on that but what I'm going to do is smooth this just a little bit, feather it a little bit, and choke it. Now what each does, smoothing it will just adjust the um, the actual physical mask it's making to make it a little smoother. Feathering sort of blends it and like softens the edges, and then choke will bring it in a little bit. So like the more you choke it, the more it brings it in, and you can negatively choke it, which will expand it. So um, sometimes like when it's faded too much that's when it's feathered it doesn't look good but you want a little just to soften up those edges and then sometimes the smoothness doesn't work so try to keep the smoothest smoothness at a pretty low level but it does help to some extent so and then just choke it a little okay so that's looking a little better again this isn't looking great so if we want to go into um this layer mode we can go back oh it looks like it's not really never really got that last part it's best when you're actually getting this footage if it really stands out against the background that it's on that's when the roto brush will work best and in this case some of the colors are kind of the same so it's a little harder for it to tell so here we have to alt click to sort of get rid of that there okay so that's good enough for the tutorials sake Okay, so next thing we're going to do is bring in our other, other footage below, and so I'm just going to skip ahead a little and then scale that up, and because it's the background footage and we're going to end up um, probably blurring it out a little anyway, let's do that now actually. Fast blur, and just bring that on just a little bit to sort of distinguish that it's the background then the plane we're going to want to blur too because it looks a little too sharp and doesn't really match so to make it match this time we're going to put on a directional blur to make it look like it's flying this will sort of simulate motion blur so then you'll want to just turn this up oh i put it on the background layer make sure put it on the right layer um there we go and then the blur length so right now it's blurring straight up and you can see with that dial and you can see here it's going straight up 
So depending on the angle we set that, we want it to blur in the direction that it's flying. So now if we blur this, it looks like it's going really fast. So depending on the speed you want it to be going, that will um, that will definitely make it look better. So this is looking pretty good right now. And so the only the next thing I guess we would notice is that the color is off. So we're gonna use curves. And then bring up some of this red. And I guess bring down this contrast. Just bring down the overall brightness. And then we'll do a little um, curves to the bottom layer too. And then once they match, this is when we can really have some fun, because then we'll do an adjustment layer, and this is just, they sort of match, but um, adjustment layer, and then we can do the overall grade that will get the real field image. So say we didn't like this sort of blue-red look, we can sort of take down the red, say pump up the green or whatever, and now it looks a lot more realistic. So now, um, this does look like, I mean, it looks pretty good, but it looks like it's on a background plate. And, I mean, it's just like a still background, and it looks very distinguished from it. So, what we're going to do to fix that is add on a solid. So the solid should be sort of light gray. We're going to make it the clouds. So make it sort of, I guess, the color of the clouds. Now, selecting this layer, we're going to do a little mask. Just in, I guess, a little cloud shape then feather this a lot so hitting F and then just blurring that out so now this is going to be a more foreground type of um, cloud element doesn't look as detailed but that's fine because if it was closer it would probably be blurry anyway and that's what it looks like just a blurry version of that and if we want to give it a little um, a little green we can add green Just a low intensity. Let's just solo this layer. You can see that there's definitely a little grain there, and that sort of makes it fit in a little more. You don't really notice it unless you're looking for it, although I suppose that's a bit much. We could do. You can still sort of see it, it just gives it a little texture. Round one, I guess, is good. Okay, there we go. So then we can add a few more layers of this, so I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. And so this one I'm going to move over here, reverse it, flip it up. You can remask it if you want, but it's easier just to, um, just to do this. And then I'll bring this sort of down towards the front. So then the next step would be to get the motion right. You have to motion track the elements you want the clouds to follow, which in this case I guess would be the other clouds. So you have to motion track um, these clouds and how you would do that is go down to tracker. So make sure window tracker is selected and that'll show up here. Then set your motion source to the bottom layer, which is that. And then just add in a tracker on there and there are plenty of tutorials on motion tracking so I'm not going to go into depth about that then apply that tracking data to a null object and then it, um, parent all these to that null object or just create a 3D camera that would work too and then if you have a still image of a plane you would if it's a 3D camera set that um, make that layer 3D and then it would match the background Otherwise, you can do a little keyframing just to make it work a little better and also animate that um, directional blur. So I guess what we'll do now is just make this fit a little better. I'm going to um, turn down the transparencies on some of these, make them a little different.
this um this bottom area is a little dark. Now you also have to keep in mind the lighting. So there would be light coming from all around it. So the fact that there's no um no light coming in these dark areas over there and over here, that could be something we would change as well. So I'm going to make a new adjustment layer. And then here with this layer selected, we're going to mask out the layers that we're going to want to sort of just make a little brighter. So that's one of them. Right there is another. And that's another. And we'll bring that in a little bit. Okay. And I mean, there are a few more we could go over there and then over there. So just find those areas and then curves, bring that on there. And make sure this dark part, we're just gonna raise the brightness a lot. And then set this to something like add, or maybe adds a little bright, but screen could be good. And then we're gonna feather it a ton. Just gonna select all of them. And then I'll move this layer under there. So it's just on top of that layer. So we can make these masks a little more precise. But um, running low on time here. So let's get to the widescreen bars. And then we'll finish. So we're going to pre-compose this. Okay. So then what we're going to do for the widescreen bars there's a preset, either you could do this with an actual image of black bars, you can just download, look for, uh, um, I know a good one, Cinemascope Crop Lines, I believe it is, but um, another one we could do that actually just crops this composition to those to that aspect ratio is free from Video Copilot, so you can download that, that's their aspect ratio pack. So the aspect ratio we're going to want is 2.40, that's the anamorphic aspect ratio. So then something like that looks very cinematic. So this is, I guess, the basic idea. That's a little more color graded, but um, we have the same basic thing. I think I also made the plane a little bigger. We could do that because it's blurred. When things are blurred, oh, so I'll turn off this adjustment layer because now they're messed up. Um, when things are blurred, they're less... Um, less noticeable if you upscale it or something like that. It just it flows a little better. So, thank you for watching this After Effects tutorial. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will try to get back to you. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.